Dot in my best of the doubt for your freedom ring and patriotic voices sing red, white, and blue. Never give up. You represent America. Open and praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. Open and praying for a brighter day. some exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. It's never been clearer to me than right now. We have got to separate from England. At Lexington and Concord, the British fired on Americans. It's time for them to get as good as they give. It's time for the first American attack on the Redcoats. Moses, I'm a journalist, not a workman. You're whatever I need you to be in order to get the Gazette to the people of Philadelphia. Yes, James. Be a proper patriot and stop complaining. Mayor's here! Hey! Oh, please. Is there anything addressed to Miss Sarah Phillips? Oh, Monsieur Henri Lefebvre? I am expecting a large shipment of gold doubloons from off the coast of Virginia. A small shipment? Ah, perhaps some news from the continent. Uh, here! Over, Over here! here. Uh, Over here! Thank you, my boy. Franklin, Franklin, Franklin. There's no word from my father? I'm afraid letters from Ohio are few and far between, Sarah. This separation cannot continue. I will make a home with him in the colonies. I vow it. Nothing for me, neither? Nothing for you, either. However, I did receive these out-of-town newspapers. Finally! My doubloons? Perhaps the next mail. <gasps> Look at this! Forced from their homes? Where? The New Hampshire Grants. Where's that? Up between New York and Canada. Beautiful country. They call the hills up there the Green Mountains. Fine logging in the Grants. Fine maple syrup, too. Maple syrup? Listen, ejectment coming thick and faster. Women sobbing and lamenting, children crying, and men pierced to the heart with sorrow and indignation at the approaching tyranny. Now that's newspaper writing. It's by someone named Ethan Allen. It sounds to me like Mr. Allen is hyperbolizing in an effort to inflame the emotions of potential traitors to the Crown. What did she say? She said, uh, something I wouldn't lower myself by repeating. She said, Henri, that this man, Allen, is a liar. He sounds to me like a patriot. He sounds to me like a loudmouth. As does someone else I know. James, Sarah, Alan might be exaggerating, but he's not lying. Allowing people's land to be taken out from under them. The Redcoats aren't using muskets this time, but they're firing a broadside at us nonetheless. I've been wondering where the next hostilities with the Crown might take place. This could be our answer. You have as much chance of filing a better story than me as a man has of walking on the moon. You're rather sure of yourself for someone with a chunk of venison stuck between his teeth. Oh, got it. Thanks. Look out! Whoa! Whoa! Oh, that was scary. Can we do it again? This would be an absolutely lovely place for my family to make a home. Thieves! Let me do the talking. I do not need you to take care of me. Thank you. I will talk with these! Afternoon, youngsters. Can we search him now, Tom? Can we search him? That won't be necessary, Luke. Our friends here will be happy to show us anything interesting they might be carrying about their persons. Won't you, kids? 
A ways back, we passed a guy who looked real rich. You can probably catch him if you hurry. Come on, Tom. Let's go get him. You're a clever pup, ain't you? Now tell old Tom what you're really doing up in these parts. I am a journalist and demand safe passage in the name of King George III. I demand to meet your leader. <laughs> and I demand to meet your cook. <laughs> You've always trapped game in the woods and don't invite me to the feast? May I assume that you are the leader of this vile band of kidnappers and thieves? Some of the boys might take offense at your characterization. But yes, I'm their leader. My name's Ethan Allen. Ethan Allen? Ethan Allen? All I did was ask you where the finest land is to be found in the grants. You Tories come here and expect us to just hand over our land and property? Are you mad or stupid or you're just a thief? Uh, I can answer that. Uh. You call me a thief? You're the one who had me bound and gagged and dragged here against my will? My men were doing their duty. And anyway, you're free now, aren't you? If you won't show me the land, I'll go see it myself. You'll do nothing of the kind, my little red coat. Yum, maple syrup. No more will you steal our homes out from under our very feet. And, sad to say, no more can we fight your tyranny peaceably. So often have the pleas and arguments of our lawful committees been ignored by your king. Ah! Ethan, on our way here, we saw a man riding a gilded chariot. Pendrake's back. Tom Buell, boys, Pendrake's back. Pendrake, you sure? Our young scout, Mr. Hiller, saw it. Miss Phillips? It looks like you'll get to see a fine Grant's home after all. Henry! You will leave my property immediately. We cannot leave your property because we are not on your property. You, Arthur Pendrake, are a snake infesting our Eden. We ask you one more time to leave this place peaceably. In the name of the governor of New York and the king of England, I will not budge, sir. What will he do? Better get down. Take him, boys. Come on! Anyone else in the house? No, Ethan. Set the horse free. This isn't right. It isn't fair. I'm glad you're here, little redcoat. You're about to learn something about fairness. Arthur Pendrake, we the people of the New Hampshire Grants have resolved to offer a burnt sacrifice to the gods of the world. Time to burn the house. This is barbaric. If you're intent on driving this good man out, why don't you simply let the earlier occupant move back in? Let's ask the earlier occupant. Tom? If I did that, they'd just throw me and my family out again. That thief would be back. Right back inside a house I built for my wife and children. Maybe this'll show them we mean business. Ethan? Give me the torch. Sorry, Tom. So am I. I built this house for freedom. Now I burn it for freedom. Go your way now. To the devil with your governor, laws, king, council, and assembly. Ugh.
People have three inalienable rights, James. Rights that they cannot be denied. And those are the rights to life, liberty, and property. If the government fails to protect those rights, it's the people's right to revolt and form a new government. It's never been clearer to me than right now. That's exactly what we have to do. We have got to separate from England. At Lexington and Concord, the British fired on Americans. It's time for them to get as good as they give. It's time for the first American attack on the Redcoats. Finally, you wouldn't dare. No more burning houses. No more Arthur Pendrakes. The Green Mountain Boys are gonna take Fort Ticonderoga in New York. Colonel Allen is never justified. It's the people's right to revolt. Just where did you get your outrageous excuse for a political philosophy anyway? Well, let me think. Ah, I remember now. That's right, Mr. John Locke from Pensford, England. Oops! <laughs> Am I addressing Colonel Allen? You are? I am Colonel Benedict Arnold. Colonel, I have been commissioned by the Massachusetts Committee of Safety to raise a regiment which I have done to attack Fort Ticonderoga. To that end, I hereby order you to turn over to me complete and utter command of the Green Mountain Boys. <laughs> well, Colonel, with all the respect due a man of your high rank and obvious importance, I formed this battalion, these are my men, and I'll be darned if some little red peacock is gonna strut in here and start giving them orders. This is not a request, Colonel, this is an order. If you will not obey it, I will force you to obey it. You and every single one of your so-called soldiers. How are you gonna do that? Go back to your committee of safety? The Green Mountain Boys are serving under Ethan Allen, or the Green Mountain Boys are going home. <laughs> Captain, this attack is too important to jeopardize by sniping between fellow patriots. So I'll make you a deal. I'll let you share command of the boys here and ride with me in front of them if you agree not to cause any trouble for us back in Massachusetts. But remember, no one gives orders to these men but me. Ever. But we agreed. He'll never do it. He must do it. Agreed. Colonel Allen! A red coat riding this way on the white horse with a bright red jacket. He was a shrimp, but he... <gasps> Did you spot the British soldier too, monsieur? <laughs> I decided to attack Fort Ticonderoga for two reasons. First, it's cannon. If we can capture the British cannon, with all due respect to you, miss, we can transport them to Boston. And send those redcoats halfway back to England with their own artillery. Second, if we control Ticonderoga, we control the main waterway into the colonies from Canada. And then, my boy, nothing goes on, in, or out of that water unless we Americans say it does. Now, our spies tell us there are only 50 or so British soldiers defending the fort. But we're expecting a heck of a fight anyway. And let me say one thing to the good people of Philadelphia. Brothers and sisters, there ain't one Green Mountain boy on God's green earth who ain't prepared to meet his maker up there in that fort. Because, Miss Phillips, every man here, no matter how uncouth, how rough, how rude, is profoundly committed to fighting for America's freedom to the last beat of his heart. Colonel Arnold, 
I wonder if I might ask you a favor? Yes, Miss Phillips? Colonel, I request permission to join you and the Green Mountain Boys in your attack on Fort Ticonderoga. Might I be permitted to accompany you on your attack? Hmm. I'm afraid that's out of the question. Son, what you're asking is highly irregular. Sir, with respect, the people of Philadelphia need to know the story of the colony's first attack on the Crown. Sir, the people of Philadelphia need to know the story of America's first attack on the tyrannous mullions of King George III. That's minions. Well, I suppose, in their way, the Green Mountain Boys are highly irregular, too. You'll stay as much out of harm's way as possible. Yes, sir! I don't doubt that the Pennsylvanians need news of our attack, Miss Phillips, but I'm afraid they'll have to get it from someone less qualified than yourself. I simply cannot permit a proper young lady to accompany troops into combat. <laughs> getting this story, did you? Fire! Mercy, sir, mercy! Take me to your commanding officer. Now! All right, all right. God and the Continental Congress, I demand that you surrender this fort. <gasps> Come on out, you old rat! My sword, sir. Yeah! Yeah! Take prisoners! Gather all weapons, artillery, and ammunition! That's an order. <laughs> <laughs> well, go on, boys. And find the rest of these redcoats. <laughs> Gather the artillery, collect the cannonballs and musket shot outside. Inch to the left, and you'd be heading for a court martial in Boston. Oh, 
so sorry, sir. <laughs> I notice you got your story after all, Miss Phillips. I do hope we meet again under more favorable circumstances. I believe you would like my father. Major Phillips, retired. I understand he was a fine soldier. Please send him my best regards. I shall do so, Colonel. I had dreamed that he might join me in the Grants some day. But I have recently learned that the New Hampshire Grants are no place for our family to make a home. We'll eat heartily tonight. Look at all this food. Mm. No wonder the Redcoats didn't fight us. They were too fat and happy from all this jerky. All this without firing a shot? We're gonna whip those red coats in no time. Don't get cocky, son. We've a long way to go before we win our freedom. Hold on there, Edward. Wasn't that little French weasel trying to drum up some of this stuff back in the Green Mountains? Dr. Franklin will put my story on the front page. He'll put mine on the front page. Dr. Franklin is many things, but he is not insane. Papers ready. Who got the front page? You both did. I never thanked you for not giving me away on the boat that night. I had to let you write that story. How else could I prove that mine was superior? Spell superior. Uh... Gee, these flapjacks look good. Oh, I imagine they are. 